Sometimes it, as I'm drawing, I have these stupid ideas that I write down, or just these little phrases that kind of give me the attitude that I want the figures to have. For example, I'm so out of your league, you aren't even playing the right sport is one of them. When I was in school, it was like everybody wanted to be a painter and I didn't have the patience to wait for paint to dry. This is a drawing with a lady covered in squirrels. <laughs> Wearing squirrels is a coat that kind of um, I was playing around with and has gone somewhat awry. The thing I like about the color pencils and the oil pastels is I can still get that quality of light. I can get sort of these really nice jewel tones and the reds and the greens and some of the blues. And it doesn't take forever and a day to wait for that to dry. They're translucent enough mediums that I can let my underdrawing show through, which I really like. There's lines dividing the faces and the skin and the planes and things like that because I want you to see that the mechanism of it. The idea is just how can I reinforce this sense of this being artificial, that these people aren't real, they're just sort of these representations of, you know, what I'm thinking about. Sometimes I'll start with a phrase that I've been kicking around in my head for a while. I take that and just sit down and start drawing. And that's where the tracing paper comes in handy because to get something sort of as refined as this kind of starts out as, you know, the junior high pentagram that you put all over your notebook. A lot of times I'll be in the middle of working on a drawing and kind of wondering what's going to come next. So I'll take my dogs for a walk and then I'll see something random happen on the street. And I'm like, that's it. So I'm just playing, just drawing and seeing what comes of it. So far, I've gotten three different kind of directions that I'm going in. There's these trippy star pattern that's starting to evolve here. The other thing that I had been working on was covering a figure with the pattern, you know, and that was just looking a little too Ace Freely or whatever from Kiss. You know, it's just sort of an evolution of trying different things and seeing which one sort of clicks. You know, once I get an idea, I kind of have to run it through till it's dead before I can move on to the next thing. So I go through a lot of, a lot of color pencil and a lot of tracing paper getting from the initial idea to the finished piece. I've always worked this way because it's a really good way for me to just kind of piece things together and move them around and take a step back and kind of see what's working and give it a good honest evaluation and just chuck it if I don't like it. first moved to Minneapolis, I got into the State Fair exhibition. So I went down there for an afternoon and I just kind of hung out by my artwork to listen to what people would say about it. And it was pretty enlightening. You know, that's kind of something I don't think a lot of artists talk about is the feedback that they get from their audience. I think a lot of people would like to say that the, they work in a vacuum and it doesn't affect anything they do. But it's really something that I think about because I'm not making it for nobody. There's kind of two challenges I feel like I have. One is to like push myself, but the other one is to keep having fun because if I'm not having fun creating what I'm creating, um, then it's not really worth doing and it ends up looking forced. And I think that people can really, it's really relatable 
is if you're having a good time in the studio and you're enjoying what you're doing, that's going to translate to your audience. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Minnesota.